This session is called Banners, Buttons, and Beyond. Level up your Canvas course. My name is Michael Meehan, and I will be taking you through how to do these things. I am a digital learning coordinator in the Wake County Public School System. The goals of this session are to analyze the advantages of using buttons on your homepage, learn how to create and add links to these buttons, and then finally, we'll practice adding these buttons to a page of your own. The agenda follows of, we're going to first look at accessibility tips. What's the point of using buttons on a homepage? What are the advantages of it? Then we'll look at homepage design and organization. What fits your style? How do you want to organize your homepage for your students? Then we're going to look at button creation. There are so many different types of buttons that it takes all shapes and sizes. And then finally, we're going to design banners and the course card images that will also be within your Canvas course. So why make buttons? What's the point of this? Number one overall is the buttons will make your page more accessible. It'll improve your navigation. It'll provide a clearer route for your learners on how they can access information. It also makes it more interactive for them. And it can look much more aesthetically pleasing than a plain old black and white homepage. Also, accessibility can help those who need it by providing clear visual cues. One thing we don't want on your Canvas homepage or your Canvas course in general is a lot of misdirection. Some of your students may go there and see this. They don't know where to go, what to click, or how to access the course content. So look at these examples of buttons that are popping up on your screen. As you see this, in your head, make some mental notes. What do these have in common? And how are they different? Some of the ways these are all have in common is the fact that they are all images that act as buttons. When you think of the word button, don't just think of a round object that you click. Buttons can take the shape of a circle, a square, a folder, a planet, a chart, anything that you want it to be. All that a button is, is an image that you're going to create. Later, we are going to link our course content to these buttons. So when your students click them, they will be directed to a learning module, a page, or a website. So we're going to do a little eye test before we start. It's going to be called one or two. I'm going to show you two images and figure out which one you think is the better image when it comes to organizing a home page. So here's image number one. You can see all of the units are mapped out. I list my email there for students to email me. This is what a home page might look like. Then we're going to go with number two. Here is the same exact content, but put in a different way. You see at the very top, that image, that's called a banner. And then you see different buttons there. These buttons would be linked to my units module. For example, if you would click the colonial era button, that will lead you to all of the course content related to that module. I have a button at the bottom left that says questions, email me, and also meet your teacher. So think in your head, which one is better, one or two? Hopefully you picked one, actually, just kidding. <laughs> Made you think there, didn't I? Hopefully you picked two, because this is the whole point of this 
session is to make these buttons so it is easy to navigate. Let's do one more. Here's number one, and here's number two. I'll show them both here side by side so you can see. Now, different than the last example is one just doesn't have buttons and the other one doesn't. They both have buttons here. So this is a good point to make is that you can make buttons for everything that you want, or you can only make buttons for certain things. The example on the left, example number one, you will see there is no content on that page. Everything is hyperlinked to a page or a module. If you want the welcome message, you'll have to click that button to get there. If you want to know how to navigate the course, you'll have to click that button. Likewise with all the other ones. On example two, you'll see there's more text on the page. There are buttons. These buttons are in the form of weekly modules and review links. So think in your head, what one relates more to what you want and to what your style is? There is no right or wrong way to this. It's all about your preference. So now let's think. The buttons that you make are going to be based on how you organize your content. So do you organize your content maybe in units? Maybe in subject. Maybe you're an elementary teacher and you teach multiple subjects. Maybe you want to have a button for each subject that you teach. Maybe it's day or the week. Maybe you want to have a button for each day so your students know exactly where to go. Or maybe your buttons are very, very broad and have a lot of, in, a lot of content in them and they're divided by the quarter or semester. Or maybe there's another way that you divide your content and organize it. Now would be a good chance to pause and to think about how you would like to organize your content. So here's a chance for you to brainstorm on a sticky note or a piece of paper or even a napkin. Brainstorm how you want to organize your content. Whatever you write down, this is what you would be making a button for. Maybe you want other buttons too. So you might want to jot that down as well. Maybe you want a button for a about me page, or maybe you want a button for the helpful links that you will be using in your class like Kahoot and Quizlet. So pause the video now and write down how you would like to organize your content and maybe other ways you would like to um, include for buttons to be made. After you have finished brainstorming what you would like to make your buttons, next we're gonna go is we're gonna actually create our Canva account. You'll need to go to the link in the slides or you can search Canva educator accounts. Once you get to the website, you will click the purple box that says get verified. Make sure you are using your school email for this. If you have a Canva account, best place to be is to go to that account and then we'll start making the buttons. See you in Canva. After creating an account or logging into your existing account in Canva, you can see there are a lot of options that you can do with this website. You can make docs, whiteboards, presentations, social media, video, newsletters, anything you can imagine creating in a form of digital content, you can probably do through Canva. So let's start with the search bar here. And I'm actually gonna search for Canvas button because Canva actually has templates already made for these buttons that we're gonna use in our Canvas course. So let's click this right here. And you can see that there are so many different templates that you can use and start with. Maybe there is some that kind of look like the style that you are going for. Maybe they have some images that kind of relate to what you want to put on your button. 
or maybe you want to start from a blank slate. In that case, you will click where it says create blank. For the sake of the example, I am actually going to start with one that's already made and we'll click this one right here. After I click it, I'm going to hit customize this template. So you can see this is what I wanted. Something user friendly is that almost in every template, everything you see is going to be able to be changed, removed, edited in some type of way. So for instance, I could change any of these things. I can delete them, change the color, change the size, anything of that nature. But before we start with that, let's look along this left hand side right here. First thing you're going to see is, nav is design. So in this tab, you can change the templates of the button that you picked. If you hit see all, you will see an expanded list. Elements, here you can use pictures, shapes, lines, graphics, stickers, anything that you want to put on there, you can use and you'll get it from this elements tab. Uploads is used if you uploaded your own picture from your computer to use. Here is where you, you would find that. And then text. Here they give you several different options of fonts and colors and different kind of schemes that go well. Um, you can use and edit any of these, or you can simply add a text box and then change the font from here. And they have a lot of different options of fonts that you can use. So for the sake of the example, let's, let's edit this a little bit. So let's say I don't want these images. I'm just going to delete them. And I want this to be... Um, thinking back to whenever I was brainstorming what I want my buttons to be and how I want to organize my content, let's say I want to organize my content by the subject. Let's say I teach several different subjects and I want a button for each subject. So I'm going to rename this to ELA. This is, and maybe I want to um, this could be a class period, this could be anything you want. For the sake of the example, I'm just going to delete that. And these shapes right there, I'm going to delete that too. This right here, I can make this bigger or smaller with the font size here, or I can drag that little white box and I can make it as big or as small as I want. Once I click it and hold down, I'm able to move it. And you see Canva does a good job of helping you line it up. So right there, you see that dashed line going from up and down. That is Canva telling me that here is the center of your circle. So I'm going to leave it right there. And I want to add a picture right here in the middle of my circle. So I'm going to go to Elements, and I'm going to search for a book. You see I have graphics, photos, videos. My personal suggestion would be graphics. And to get a larger list of these graphics, I'm going to click the word see all. Here I can look through and browse different kind of graphics that I can put on my button. And once I find one that I like, all I would have to do is click it and it will be placed on my button. And you can obviously see here it's too big right here. I can click on any of these white circles and I can resize it. And I can drag it and Canva will then tell me, hey, there it is, that's the middle. So I'll drop it right there. So maybe that's what I want my button to look like. So to download and save this to your computer, which will then be used for your Canvas course, You'll hit the share button right here, and then you'll scroll down to the word download. 
Now you're going to want to save it as a PNG. That's the best way with the highest quality for you. You have a couple of options here. If you click transparent backgrounds, you will remove the background color of your image. You can see right here, red is the background color of my whole image square. If I remove that, it will just be this round red circle. So let's take a look. If I hit transparent background and download, and it takes a couple seconds to download, and I click it, and you see it is a it is a circle. If that's what you want, then perfect. This is exactly what you should do. Maybe you actually want this square. So you would hit share, download, and do not check transparent background. We can see how this would look, how it'd be different than the one with the circle. And there you go. Your whole button would be this square that has a circle in it, but it would be a square. So let's say you want a different shape for your button. I'm going to click Add Page. I'm just going to delete this right here. So you can see with this template that there is a circle right here. That is Canva kind of telling you, here's, here's what a perfect circle looks like if you kind of want to base around how you're going to place your images and your text within this. So up in the top left, you see this is where I can change my background color. I'm just going to change it to white for right now. So let's say I don't want a square, I don't want a circle as my background. Instead, I may want a different shape. Let's say I'm teaching English. So what could be a good shape for me to use? Let's say I do want that book. So I'm going to search through books again and find a different book this time. Maybe this is the one I want. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to resize it a little bit. And I want the word English to be on my book. To do that, I'll go over to the text. I'll hit add a heading. And I'm just going to type out the word English. And here I can drag it and put it wherever. I can change the font. So I can find a font that I like. I can also change the color of that text. I'll make it white. And once again, if I want to make this bigger, I can either change the font size here, or I can drag this and make it bigger. I want it to be right on top of that front cover, just like that. I can also change the angle of this. Do you see these two, two arrows in the form of, of a circle? I can tilt that and I can make it look like it's written on top of that book. So maybe this is what I want my button to look like. I can hit share, download. I'm gonna hit transparent background because I don't want this white square to be part of it. I just want this book. I hit the word download. Let's take a look and see how this looks. Perfect. This would be the shape of my button. Now would be a good time for you to pause the video, maybe experiment a little bit in Canva to make your buttons. Refer back to the list of how you want to organize your content. Maybe you said, I want them to be organized by the units. Well, maybe you, you can make a button for each unit. Um, maybe you wanted to organize yours by subject. And you can make a button for each subject. So now that you know how to do it, pause, try it out, and then we'll move on to the next part. Now let's open one of your Canvas courses because this is where we are going to put the buttons into. Here is a Canvas course that I just created, so it's completely blank. 
yours may be that way too or you may already have content in that so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a page because all of these buttons are going to go on a page a page is like a material resource for them students won't be making a copy of this or changing it they're just going to be looking at it or in this case clicking buttons and navigating from it so i'll click the word pages here you can see i don't have any pages yet because this is a brand new course i'll go in the top right that's the word that says pages i'll click that and i will call this home page whenever you are in your home page you will see this right here is called your rich content editor you can add anything you can think of in here you can add text pictures videos anything like that for your students to read and to access remember they will not be able to change it or make a copy of it but instead just read it or click from it to start i'm going to add a heading i'm going to say welcome to my course then i'll hit enter you see my cursor is down here the best practice that i know is to add a table to put your buttons into that way your buttons are organized they stay together and it's just a better way for you to edit whenever you are adding buttons so to add a table we'll go to insert the word table and i want to do a three by two grid because let's say i only have six buttons you may have 12 buttons so you may want to do a four by three or a three by four grid my table is highlighted so you see these different kind of options up here here's where i can add a row get rid of a row delete the whole table or i can click this one right here that is table properties that is exactly where i want to start because you can see this table right here after i save this my students will see this table all those lines and maybe i don't like that maybe i don't want them to see these lines i just want these lines to be used as a way for me to organize my buttons and my content. So I'm gonna click this button right there and where it says border width, I'm gonna change that from one to zero. And then alignment, best practice is to keep it center. And then I'll hit save. This now changes it to a dotted line. This is telling me that my table's there when I'm in edit mode, but when I save it, this table will not be seen so that's perfect so here's where i'm going to add my buttons each cell is going to have one button i'll put my cursor in this top left one and then i'll click the image of images and hit upload image here you see a little rocket ship appears i'm going to click the rocket ship to upload my image and all of these are downloads that i have created most of them are buttons but here's the one that i just made so i'll click it and then hit open and yep that's exactly it that's my english button i'll hit submit and it's going to put it in there now you see it's very very big we don't want it to be this big so i'm going to click this and then a little pop-up comes up that says image options i'll click that and a pop-up to the right will pop up and where it says size, where it says custom, I want to change that to small and then hit done. That's more like the size that I want. I can click it, hit the three vertical dots and then make it center align. And there we go. So let's see how this looks in my page. Perfect. There are no table lines and it's perfect so when i click this nothing happens that's because i didn't link it to anything but in order to link it to something i gotta have that thing already made so what i want to link this button to is a module or a folder for all of my english resources so i'm going to travel to modules right here and i will add a module and i'm going to call this module english because that is exactly what it is i can hit add module it's not published yet because this is 
this little circle with a line through it, if I click it, I can now see that it is published. So here is where my button will go to. Later on, I can add in different assignments and quizzes and resources within this module. But for now, the fact that I made it is the, is the biggest step. So let's go back to pages. Here's our page. And I'm going to go to edit, top right. And I'm going to click it, highlight it, and then click the link. And I want to link this to a course link. If I would click external link, this would be for like websites or a video. But what I'm linking it to is to something that's within my course. So I'll click course link. I'll find modules at the down arrow and I will click English. You'll see that yellow square will highlight it to kind of give you a heads up. Of, hey, we did it. It is linked. So perfect. I'll travel down hit save and let's see let's test it out if i click this image it'll go exactly where i want it to be which is my english module now we're not done yet let's go back to the page let's make sure it's published so let's click the word publish and then to make this as our home page click the three vertical dots and, and select use as front page and here we click home and we can see oh wait it's our modules that are our home page let's go to where you see choose home page off to the right and what we want is a page to be our home page hit save and now whenever your students go to your course here is what they are directed to now is a good time to pause the video add in a button, or maybe you made all of your buttons, you can continue adding the buttons the exact same way we did it in this example. Now that we've learned how to make buttons in Canva and then put those buttons in our Canvas course and link them to our content, let's look at how to make a banner in Canva. So just like you did with the buttons, well, let's go to the search bar and we're going to search for canvas banners now you'll see right here there is an option for canvas banners and you have several different templates just like you did for the buttons it'd be probably worth your time to go through these see if if, if any of these relate to your content or your style or anything of that nature you can always start from scratch in the top left by clicking this right here. It'll place it um, the dimensions to the exact sizes that is needed. For the sake of the example, let's go with this one right here. I'm going to click this and then I'll click customize this template. And then you can see it's going to populate and I can change almost anything on here. I can change this, the, the size, the font, the color. You see these images right here, I cannot change the color of these. I can't delete them and move them, but I can't change what color they are. So let's say I'm pretty pleased with how this is, um, and I'm not gonna change too much, but I know that on the left hand side where it says design is where I can change this template. Elements is where I know I can add images. Uploads is if I have something saved to my computer, I can upload it there. And then the text is where I can add text to my banner. So let's go to our banner. I'm just going to change a couple of things make this bigger i can move it and you'll see the little lines down the middle will, t will show me that this is in the center and instead of miss barlow's class let's change it to mr mian's class and i'll make this bigger as well so yeah 
I'm pretty pleased with the way this looks. And just like I did with the buttons, I'll hit share. I'll go to download and PNG. And I'm going to keep my background because that's kind of the point of the banner is to have something at the very top of my canvas site um, to add to my style of the overall presentation. Hit download. And it'll take a second or two to download. And then I can go back into my Canvas course. And you'll notice here's the home page that we left, left on. And if I don't have the options of adding a banner in my settings, which you can see right here, I don't have an option to add a banner. Depending on the school district that you work in, you may or may not have this option to add a banner. Here's what it may look like if you do have the option to add a banner. You see this is my banner. When I'm in my settings, it'll say wide banner right here. If I don't have that, then I'll just add it to a page. If I do have it, here's where I would add it, underneath the settings tab. So for those who do not have the option to add a banner, we can go back to our pages, find our, our home page, hit edit, and I'm just going to put my cursor at the very top right here. And just like I did before, I'll add an image, upload image. I can either click this or you can see the download is right here. I'm just going to drag it and drop it in there. And that is exactly what I want it to look like. I hit submit. And my banner is now placed in there. Once I click it, there are blue squares on the ends. I can change the size of it if I want. Make it bigger, make it smaller. Make it to be whatever size I would like. And then I can hit the word save. And here is how it would look. Adds another dynamic to my Canvas course. For those that do have the option to add a wide banner, once again, this would be found in your settings. This image would not be here. It would, you would see choose image. And like did before, we're going to click it. And I can find the banner that I made. Here's the banner that I made. It's for my sandbox course. Hit open. And there it is. When I go back to my subject, it is at the very, very top. If I hit different tabs, it stays there. So different looks, once again, all depends on the settings of your school district. You may have it or you may not have it. Either way, you are able to add a banner in there to give it an extra bit of flair. Last thing we'll look at is how to make a course card image for your canvas course and how to put it into the course so whenever you are in a home view of all of your courses you'll notice that there's an image right here and there's nothing right here but that will change this image can help your students kind of see what the course is maybe you have multiple courses for your students um, it's, a, it's an easy way for them to navigate through them. It's also an easy way for you to navigate amongst your different courses if you have different courses. More times than not, the image that is your course card image is also the image that you have as your banner. It doesn't have to be, but sometimes it makes sense. So if you want whatever your banner is, to be similar for your course card, here's what we would do. We would go back to Canva, and here is the image that I used as my banner. And I wanna keep the same style. I wanna keep it consistent so that it matches styles so my students can easily find it. I'll hit the word resize. This button that says resize right here, it's gonna make, make a copy of it. I'm gonna change the size. And I'm going to change this to 262 by 146 pixels. 
This is the size that is needed for a course card image in Canvas. So I'll hit copy and resize. And you'll see it'll take me to the resize version of this image. Sometimes it resizes are great. Sometimes you may need to, you know, move some things around. So here I want to actually make some things bigger so that it kind of fills up the page a little bit. And once again, you're able to do this once you click it and you can hit those uh, circles in the corners and drag it and resize it. I can do that here. And maybe that's exactly the way I want it to look. So, you know, all the things that you've learned so far, you can add elements, you can make it totally different if you want. Um, you can start from scratch to create your course card image. Just make sure that it is 262 by 146 pixels. So when I have that done, once again, I'll hit share, download, PNG. I want to keep it as everything on there. So I'm not going to click transparent background. And I'll hit download. And here, give me a couple seconds, it'll download it. And when I'm in this course, I can go down to where you see settings. And here, where it says image, this is your course card image. So this is the image that you're going to see whenever you are navigating all of your Canvas courses. You see the course that we're editing, it's just gray and black. That's kind of like the default. So let's go back. Let's hit choose image. I can drag and drop. I can look in my computer. In most cases, I'll just drag and drop if it's lying right there. That's exactly the one I want. I'll make sure I go down to the bottom, hit update course details. And there we go. If I go back to this view right here, I'll be able to refresh this page. And let's see, there it is. So this is what my students would be seeing. Maybe next time I'd want to make my name a little bit bigger, but this is a good way for you to see how it would look for your students. And once again, if you did not make a banner, maybe you chose not to make a banner. What you would need to do is to simply, in Canva, you're just going to go to custom size right there. And once again, it is 262 by 146. You'll hit create new design. And here is the size that will fit your course card image in Canva, Canvas. A good time to pause the video and you can practice making a button, a banner, course card image, anything that we've learned in here today. Also, it would help you out to access the slides um, to this presentation. There is a step-by-step -step guide in the slide version if you learn better using that. But also you can pause the video, go back, and do it at your own pace. I hope you learned something valuable in this, and thank you for watching.